for the topic in uh, conversation. Um, I want you to allow me. We're going to speak in English predominantly for the session. So I hope everyone's fine with that. Um, and that's partly my fault. <laughs> I want to start off hearing about Tayyip and hearing about this incredible person in front of me, Tala Saleh, who is a friend, a sister, and a creative partner in time, I want to say. So please, Tala, tell us about Tayyip and about yourself. As an audience, if we go off and talk about other things, doesn't you bring us back, okay? Because it's easy to topic and talk about other things. Um, thank you, Adwa, for having me, and thank you for this lovely partnership that we've created called Creative Exchange. Um, to give you a background on why we created this, Adwa and I have known each other for years. We've participated in a lot of events together over the years. I have accidentally moderated some of her talks, and every time we sit together, we just keep talking and talking and talking. And what? How can we work together? How can we do things together? And I think in both of our industries, everything starts with an idea. And this idea today is creative exchange. It's a partnership between Tayyib, ourselves, I'll give you an introduction about that soon, and Falak to spark these conversations, to build a creative and innovative community, to build entrepreneurs, to build founders, to take entrepreneurs and founders like ourselves to that next level, to start conversations together. And in, hopefully those conversations lead to results and lead to um, larger projects, lead to different investments, lead to connections that allow each of us to grow. So I think this is the main objective of Creative Exchange. Um, today it is this, tomorrow it could take on a life of its own. And this is how we view this partnership, at least from our end. 100% with you. Um, Tayyib today is a joint venture company between myself, Tana Saleh, and 9H Capital in Malta. Um, it was an accidental jo joint venture, let's say. A beautiful accident happened to you. Beautiful Tana. accident. It's a beautiful accident. The name Tayyib, as I was explaining to a few of the gentlemen I just met, um, I realized during these beginning phase of being introduced to my partners that in Malta, most of their language is based on Arabic. And we'd be in talks and they'd keep saying, you know, okay, Tayyib, Tayyib, Shismu. It's like, Lahva. Does Tayyib mean Tayyib like I say Tayyib? And everyone's like, yeah. It's like, okay, خلاص. This is This has to be our name because it relates. First of all, our team is in Saudi, Malta, and Egypt. And all three countries say Tayyib in the exact same way. And uh, in in order to close our projects, Taban, which is us. So oh, we, I like the... we stole it, yeah. but it's okay. <laughs> Imitation is the highest form of flattery. For sure, have to for say. sure. It helps. Look, it helps. I'm not going to lie. But uh, yes, today Tayyib is a creative tech agency. Um, by creative tech, I mean we work in branding, digital marketing, UI, UX, websites, applications, and products. We provide creative tech solutions for our clients, whether they're government, semi-government, private, or today, the conversation we want to have is startups. Beautiful. Bye. From that, um, I want to give a, yeah, yeah, a quick, you know, I just want to see a quick show of hands. Let's come ahead. How many people do we have here from the creative world? If we can see. All right, nice. nice. How many people do we have? Taban, Sami, my how many people do we have from the investment world? Hello. Okay. I would say 1%. I like yeah, not the only one. <laughs> How many people do we have from the business world in general? Majority. Majority. Nice. I'd love to know which world you're from. So please, Tfadbad. Nice. Mixed thing and business, but mostly policy. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, so we might throw a few questions. Yeah. Some topics. Uh, first of all, I'm going to know where I should apply. I'm going to right now, and I'm ignoring the assessment from where I'm from. I think you've learned all three. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if we don't come out of this of this conclusion by the end of this talk, then we didn't do the talk well. So you can assess us later, inshallah. All right. So the fact that we attracted you to come here means that you're definitely placed between one of these three. Definitely. Yeah. So I think as a first talking point, and I think there is a lot of confusion between the world of innovation 
and the world of creativity or definitions in general. So one kid at first, thing we want to put out there and on the table is where does innovation start or end and where does creativity start and end this work and this is my first question to you Tara from a creative events um, how do you define the main difference between innovation and creativity so let's stick let's start with innovation first right and so we had this conversation backstage innovation is kind of taking a creative idea and turning it into a product or a service, right? So in order to, to be innovative or to create an innovative product, you need creativity. What is creativity? Creativity is generating an idea and communicating it. You can communicate anything. It doesn't necessarily become something tangible. So this is where creativity comes in. So between creativity and innovation, you if we were to take it, you know, on a more practical point. Oh, I have an idea. That idea is a creative idea. How do I take that idea and make it a product product or a service? I need to be innovative. I know. So turn what I get from what you're saying and correct me if I'm wrong. Creativity is does not necessarily have to be a business or does not need to be something that is sold. It's just a practice, uh, a theme. And innovation is turning something into a, into a product or service that is sold to a third party. 100%. I'll talk about, for example, the medical field, which is not part of any of our fields. Um, for example, a doctor can be creative in his or her approach of how they treat a patient and innovative in the tools that they build and create within this, uh, for, for their field or for their um, speciality. So it doesn't necessarily have to fall under the creative or agency world creativity is a thought it's the way it's a it's a it's a way of thinking it's a way of moving and innovating is applying that creativity into something tangible i'd love to know if any of the crowd disagrees well, please feel free to challenge and debate well i know we have I mean, i'm out there point fingers or, or i say names but i just i just want to give a quick example one of the people sitting on the first row is a founder of a creative company uh, and it's a media creative company. Yeah, and he learnings throughout learning curve. I don't know if he slash she would like to talk about it. Yeah, sure. And I think innovation, by the way, has become a very big buzzword around. You know, innovate, innovate. You know, let's every department needs to innovate. What what is innovate? As he said, it's taking something that already exists could already, let's say today in our world, already exists and making it better, making it more cost efficient, making it more creative in its approach, you know, or taking something that you have up in the air and building and making it tangible. So a different way for us to drink water is innovation, you know. Um, I'd love to double down on the concept of innovation. Uh, and maybe then you can double down on the concept of creativity in practice as a creative. But innovation as practice, at least on the business world, there, there are 10 known types of innovation. But by the 10 known types could be pivoted, could be taken into a different lens. But I just want to mention uh, 10 types follow three components of any business. Product, experience and brand. So innovation in a product it's clear and simple, and I think it's the most common kind of innovation. This innovation in an experience is what... Uh, I want to take you back... I want to take you back to, to Starbucks, when coffee shops were not a place where you sit in. Coffee shops were a place that you just grab a coffee from and you leave. What do we mean about good innovation? also can go into a part of an experience, a customer experience, a customer journey. Starbucks innovated in the concept of coffee delivery. You know, you don't need to take your coffee and leave, especially in Italy, when coffee was extremely, uh, yeah, and it was a number one country that promoted a coffee as espresso. So you take a shot and you leave. They innovated in this concept. They a whole environment, a whole atmosphere towards drinking coffee and working. And here, you see this culture being used for external brands. You see Saudi brands, Kilhom, Nefsa Sheikh, and so forth. But this is a quick example on innovation and experience. I'm actually glad you brought up Starbucks because, yes, they didn't reinvent the wheel, but they built a brand. 
and they built an experience. And this is, I know our topic is investment and growth and growth strategies for startups. Well, we're going to get to that, but this is more important. So she mentioned brand. Starbucks built a brand, built an environment and built a customer experience that today, if you ask anyone, even uh, let's say Gen Z or kids, what did Starbucks create? Frappuccinos, non-caffeinated, basically ice milkshakes that all of the kids love to drink, right? Why do they like it? Because it's Starbucks. It's good. Sorry, not great. But they built an experience around it and they built a brand around it, which allowed them to grow. And this is where we want to kind of tackle. When you build, whether it's a product or a brand or even as a startup. So I'm going to talk about us ourselves and Tayyip. We are two companies with over 10 years experience in different parts of the world today who built a new brand. You know, I'm not going to say we don't struggle with building our brand 100%. Because if you don't have a strategy, you don't put forward how you want to build your brand. It will at some point be difficult for you to grow. You know, so you need to know from the beginning. And if you can't do that from the beginning throughout your stages, which I want to ask you is, you know, build, build your brand tone first, first and foremost, who are you, you know, and then what do you do? Because what you do can change, you know, a lot of companies have pivoted, especially after COVID. Um, and I think this is my question for you, which is when with your experience in with startups, what are the common challenges you see that? you know, startups face from a creative point of view, from, you know, building a brand, from identifying who they are. Because also in the startup journey, you can start with one idea. And as you go through that journey, it can change because your market changes, your ideas change, your prototype doesn't work, whatever it is. What are the most common challenges that you face or you, you have seen in your experience from a creative perspective? Um, I'd like to tackle this question in, in two ways. The first way is creativity in the sense of, of media communications. And the second is creativity in the world of a practice in terms of a mindset. Um, you mentioned something important, which is in the pivoting of a startup. Uh, a fun fact, in the 70% of startups pivot in their first three years, 70%. And a lot of the billion dollar companies that we see today are companies that pivoted multiple times. How many of you guys are, are familiar with Slack? It's a communication channel. So it's a multi-billion dollar company. It um, seven or six years ago, seven, seven years ago, Forbes ranked Slack as the fastest growing, as the fastest growing uh, SaaS company as a software in uh, a 21st century. Slack is now an internal messaging system. How did Slack start? It was a gaming company. They were developing a game and they spent years developing a game. Then they realized in, in the process of developing this game, they built a communication messaging system. In turn, they need to communicate to each other. They didn't want to WhatsApp, they didn't want, they wanted something private. In that process, developers' friends, I'm seeing you're, you guys are using a tool to communicate together. How can I get access to it? So they realized there's a pain somewhere else that we didn't originally think of. They pivoted. Sharikat uh, X, previously Twitter, started as a micro audio blogging platform. Uh, I can keep on going on and on and on about companies that pivoted. But the reason I'm saying all of these examples is for one reason. Without creativity in a, in a mindset, in the way that I look at data, the way that I, that I look at facts, I will not be able to make a decision to pivot because I need creativity. A large point of it is about taking a risk and about going outside of the comfort zone. I triggered the word tonight. Risk. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, you triggered me saying that's it's what they, for example, Slack found a creative solution within their growth or within their startup phase. So creative, yeah, but they found a gap, right? And, and they built by mistake. By mistake. So we're going to be a very good mistake. There, the, when you they built, they found a they found a gap. They built a creative, they found the creative solution for that gap, and they built a full. From my end, I'm going to say a full brand out, out throughout it. And 
I'm it's good you brought up Slack because agencies like ours and especially a lot of creative agencies and media agencies and communication communication agencies all use Slack for internal communication, you know? And it's something that today I think the creative world other than Canva cannot live without, you know? Um, so finding that creative solution to a problem which is who are we and what do I do is part of your let's say startup growth 100% and uh, I'd, I'd love to know and even from a day-to-day -day life I need to be creative as an individual regardless if I'm in business or not and how I want to manage my daily schedule for example creativity is not just in the sense that we see it today but a lot of a lot of words are being used today in a way that we end up how else we end up putting it in a certain box so I'd love to know also from the crowd is what uh, what moment did you realize that creativity was needed to solve a problem, a regular problem in your business, uh, in your in your agencies, regardless? And when when did you realize that this is what creativity is called? It's not just problem solving. Then you cannot solve a problem without creativity. Uh, I know, especially startup founders have a lot of examples. He was like, also not every yeah, I mean, every single domain, even in medical domain, Zay Matala mentioned as well, has this. A long story short from this is that creativity is not just a business practice and it's not just a media practice. It's a day to day practice and it's a mindset as well. Um, from here, I'd like to go back to the challenges, <laughs> the, challenges that... the challenges of, uh, of startups. Yeah. Uh, in their, in, so in your experience, where do you see startups struggle with their creative approach, whether it's in creating a brand or creating a voice or understanding who they are or even pivoting I think where or in, when yeah i think it's in having a stereotype in your creativity is about design it's about a graphic design it's about a presentation this is a, and it's not just a startup challenge Sarah, it's everyone's challenge yeah and we need to be consistently reminded that creativity is not about what something looks like. it's about our brain how our brain works how our brain uh, untangles a puzzle. Uh, this is one of the first challenges. A second, I would say, is sometimes neglecting uh, the importance of creating a brand that will not continuously rebrand. Bimana. And again, I'm not in, I'm not from the school. Tara, Eli, I have a startup. I have an idea. I want to start fast and go into a brand. No, go and experiment fast. Validate your product. Validate your uh, value proposition. But at the same time. Keep in mind, in the work you do, you don't want to create something minimal where you need to pivot continuous times in the head of From here, I want to go back to you, Tala. You mentioned something and you mentioned Canva. Oh, this, it triggered me, Shway. Uh, we see a lot of businesses and in different industries, but there is a creative industry in the world of tech startups and in the world of investments as well. As a creative agency and a creative yourself, when do you find the importance of a company or a founder or uh, anyone in general that wants that has an idea to start collaborating with a creative local of a freelancer an agency or and again keep in mind that the problem with any founder is finding a budget for sure i'm always going to say from the beginning because it makes our life easier but in reality that doesn't always happen um I think the most important thing for a founder, for an entrepreneur, I know I have friends in the audience who, who know the pains we go through and um, building, uh, her brand has pivoted several times. Um, it, you need to think in the beginning, who are you, right? Who are you? You don't need to have a name. So you need to think about who you are. What are you giving? What's your tone in the market? Okay, great. You have a name for your product. That's something tangible. How can I grow on that? How do I build? How do I build my communication strategy? You don't need to have an agency. You may need from day one, you put together your structure. You have a CFO, you have a CEO, you have your COO and you say, okay, I need a brand strategist to help me understand where I can position my product in the market. I just need a strategy of how do I position myself in the market. You don't need a full-fledged agency. Don't tell anyone I said that if this is recorded. Um, but you need strategic people in different times or different stages of your company to make sure that this brand that you are building eventually leads to you 
building your brand equity, which we will get to, right? You're building a name, you're entering the market with something that you believe everyone needs. Who you are, what you do, why do I need it, and how does it affect my life? You know, these are the main things you need to answer. And around that, you build your brand. You know, and the main, main part of it is, like you said, with Starbucks. How does Starbucks resonate with its customers? It creates a community. It creates a world where families can sit, where kids can go and have, you know, non-caffeinated. It allows a mother to take her child for her to drink something with her. It's an experience, right? So you're building your brand, you're building, which eventually, if you're going to build your company and get investors and get, go through that whole world, which is, I'm very not well versed in that world, is building brand equity. You can start from day one. I can come and tell you, look, we as an agency want to be a part of your growth and we want to build this brand with you because we believe in your product. We can discuss later, which we'll discuss, creative ways of funding, creative ways of being, you know, partners together and so like this. Or you, I can come and say, okay, let's build your structure. Let's see what type of people you need in stage one. Um, what type of people you will need in stage two. Do you need a CFO now? No. Okay, fine. We need a CTO. We need someone to build the app. We need someone to help innovate in the way we think. Okay, next. Great. We built this app. What do we call it? Let's bring in a brand strategist. You know, so it so really depends on the needs are phase. also agile and very dynamic. Yeah. How sure. can a founder afford when they're first starting off? Yani, I, again, I want to be as practical as possible because yani, a lot of an audience or hatta, yani, within the in podcast, this is the number one question. I'm bootstrapping. Yani, I, I need every single real I can get to put it on my tech development. And I need to do, I need to have a product. So how can I afford investing in the importance of creativity? So, for example, I'll tell you, with us, at least in Tayyip, I don't work in the tech field or the, you know, UI, UX, web development field. But having coming from the branding field, it was something I was lacking. And this is the whole um, purpose of our my joint venture with 9H, because they are experts in that. Today, we're building our brand and utilizing our internal team. But you can come to me tomorrow and say, Tara, I have an idea. I want to build... Uh, a prop tech app, because one of my friends in the audience wants to build a prop tech app, right? I can tell you, okay, great. We will invest with you or we will be your partners and we will, you know, bear the cost of building the technology, creating that brand, building your MVP, putting together your structure, telling you who you need for, you know, shares later on or equity. I mean, you would know how this works better, but we can tell you, okay, we believe in this product as an agency. So a lot of people have a very rigid view of creative agencies that, no, I only need them for communication or marketing or advertising. That's not true. It depends on their stream. As a creative tech agency and you having a, an idea, an innovative idea, I can tell you, let's build this for you. You don't have a tech team, we'll find the tech team. We have the people in place to help you understand and innovate how to build that technology. I love that you mentioned this because I think you touched upon the concept of ESOC, uh, employee stock options or uh, expert stock options, regardless of what it is. I have an idea and I'm bootstrapped on cash and I need to find experts that can help me develop this idea. From there, I want people that are not just experts to come and provide me a service. I want people that will invest with me for the long, for a long run. So what I do is I open up 20, 30% of my company, 15% of my company to give to individuals. When I give to an individual, I put a few rules in place. Number one, I put a vested period. A vested period in that I will not give all of these talks at once. I will give it depending on a project. When the project is done, I will give and distribute uh, um, the stocks similar to what Tala was saying, or I will make it time bound to four years or five years or so forth. Number two is a cliff period. A cliff period is a trial period. I want to try you out, you want to try me out. Let's see if it works. Upon passing a cliff period, then our stock vesting will start being exercised. And it's a very common practice in general, for any founder that is bootstrapped on cash, but they want, they don't just want a service. They want a service for the long run and they want a partner that they can truly rely on in general. And this is where we go to long-term partnerships with creative entities, right? So like you said, 
today creative entities i think and those especially like ours who are who are focused a lot on tech are viewed as only a service provider but that's not the case because we can build this long-term partnership with startups with founders with entrepreneurs being entrepreneurs ourselves to help build and grow and create a long-term relationship with them you know and i mean this is where this comes in right um and exp- I, i guess this takes us to the creative approach of funding right okay, okay. i have a really good example to answer this question but it's not about funding but it can be applied to funding okay. so four weeks ago we got a very weird package in fedek I'd love, I'd love it if we can get the package. Can we? <laughs> They don't like what you're asking. <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay, we got a very, very weird package. It felt like delivered. And it wasn't delivered by Aramex. It wasn't delivered by any shipping agency. It wasn't. I, I don't want to say it until it comes from Abraham. <laughs> I'll answer a part of this question without answering a second part until it comes. Being creative in fundraising is about so many things. Number one, how do I want my company to look like to the investor? Fiche in the world of mergers and acquisitions is a desperate sale. A desperate sale. Having a desperate sale is not about the company performance. It's not about anything. It's not about, it's not about the company's performance or business model or anything. It's purely about how the company seems, seems huh, to the investor if he's desperate or not to sell fast. In the world of mergers and acquisitions, if there's, if there's a desperate sale, private equity firms and M&A uh, firms smell this. So what do they do? Instead of buying your business for 100 million, they, end, they see a spot for them to negotiate with you to, to take it down to 10 or even 5. So the reason I'm mentioning a desperate sale is because this is where creativity comes into play. And it's hundred percent. And it's also investment. Lena, in the world of MA, everything is about optics. How does it look? So how it looks is what's gonna make my acquirer think of how they can integrate this company into theirs how the team can be integrated into theirs, how the business model can help their company grow as well. How many of us find, how many of us find companies that are incredible in marketing and branding and so bad in delivering us uh, an actual value to the customer? How many of us in this room try the company, Fanana in marketing, but when you try the service, you're like, how? I know I've tried it yani, multiple times. All of us, right? What does this tell you? Brand and marketing. That and creative agencies are very good and at their job. That, that's that that's we're very good at their job. <laughs> But it's also about an illusion. What happens when you try a, an amazing brand out that you hear amazing things of, but when you try it, it doesn't work out. Will you order again? Brand value is about retention. It's not about starting with the brand. And we will come to that. Definitely. Best brand value, I never saw come with help. What was the package? Uh, okay. Fine. Imagine this in fundraising. So forget what I'm going to tell you now. Purely imagine it in fundraising. Shuffle package, we got this box. No label from any shipping company, صح? Very sketchy. Very. Wait for it. Very weird. Billahi ta'ala, agri, agri li maktub. نادوا اشطر واحد بالرياضيات عشان تفتحون العلبة حلو وهنا آه. اخر ايه؟ مين؟ اوه يو ونت بلاي ات؟ والله وات ا هيوج ماركتنج فور ذا ثينج ذاتس انسايد عندكم انتم هنا مين؟ هو از جود ان ماث صراحة مو مرة صعبة يعني عادي مهندسين اشوف ورا قاعدين مرة في يدهم ها؟ طب هنا هنا وش مكتوب؟ مربع السمنة Very weird. Yeah. صح؟ yeah. Can we say it's not creative? It's creative. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's part of your curiosity, so it's creative. Thank you. Does it make you wonder what's inside? Okay. But it's a No label. Yeah, you're in a company. You're in a company. 
Everyone's here. Fetch IG come package. They kill it. Hit soon. Finish it. What's inside? You guys, how old are you? This is inside. First thought that comes to mind is what? It's dangerous. I, I don't want to open it. But Snaps in Walk Tree, read what's here. Math equations. So you really want to know what's inside. But you know when it's dangerous. I don't want to know what's inside. But Snaps in Walk Tree, you can't. Is this not creative? Do you wanna do you wanna really do this? Okay, we got this. I wanna I wanna do a, a test. But what do you guys expect is inside? What's that? What's that? What's that? Shake it. Smart. What is it? I think an invitation. An invitation, smart, hello. Yeah. A gift. Get it? <laughs> you guys, what was inside was this. Yeah. Imagine the experience. See three math equations here to open and lock. So the math equations were for the Yeah, yeah, lock. for a lock had it. And then when you open a lock, you find this inside. But what do you think is inside of this family? There's nothing inside. There's only this. What do you think is inside of this? Spices. Well, why my first thought is well, I was saying, Yeah, Rafi, come on, Dugga. Oh, Dugga, yes, yes, shukran. So, yes, you would think spices. Salmon, Lana, Sah, Rabba, Salmon. Fine. You open this, can't feed. Uh, a QR code, nothing, nothing inside. Best winner, best can fee a QR code. So, hit in it up until now, you wasted like 10 minutes opening this up, solving the math equation, wasting your time, and knowing you're in danger for your life. Best you can't stop. And then you find the QR code, you scan it. What do you see? Looks like a CV. <laughs> no way. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we never forgot this. We get CVs daily. Did you hire him or her? I well, couldn't. The team couldn't. Al Ghada. Couldn't the team was like, we wanna be, wanna be with HR when they interview. And he couldn't. The team, ah, the person. And we had two sides in the team. Side can never hire him. I hate him. Eh? They're very aggressive. Or side can, I wanna meet this person. <laughs> Amy, what's the project management? I would imagine market. I would imagine side. Like, what side are you guys on? I, I really want to know. Are, are it's a you... nice creative approach. Uh, definitely. I think it will stick in our memory. But are you with or against with? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what side are you with? Seriously, would you want to meet him or had asabu? You you'd want to meet him? Min hay asab. Inside the interview, but us. Now, what was frustrating, and you're opening and she, we had a career, had they expecting, man, you were expecting something else. Then the element of surprise. And then when you open all of this, you find a CV for someone in project management, not even marketing, which is what you would expect. And I had very mixed emotions. I, I, I genuinely, I had very mixed emotions. I wanted to meet him. But I meet him, yani, I, but I also wanted to figure out what's here. Yani, there's something different than other humans. But what do we call this? Motivation. He intrigued you with I, his creative approach. I would say I would call this creativity. He intrigued you with his creativity. Yeah, and he left a blueprint in my mind. Yani, ah, I'm with you on stage. I thought about him. Ma'anna daily, we get a CV. But no one sticks. But this is, so this is where I think at the beginning of your journey, building a product or a something tangible, this is the beginning of your journey. This is, let's, if we're going to take this example. As a prototype. As a prototype, we're going to take this example. At the beginning of this person's career journey, let's say with Falak, he left 
a long lasting imprint in your mind. Yeah. So the fact that you brought it now, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> so in the beginning of your journey, when you create a product or when you're building something, create this, let's go back, it's first impressions, right? People never forget first impressions, whether they're good or bad. And this is where you as a, as a founder, as an entrepreneur, as a, you know, even, I don't know, tech, app builder, whatever you want to call yourself. This is your first impression when you present yourself to investors, to the market, to whatever it is, this is what lasts. And this is where your communication, so you asked me earlier, where do creative entities or people come in? It really depends. Do you want to have this long lasting impact from day one? You bring in a brand strategist, you bring in a creative entity, uh, uh, a creative strategist, you bring in a, you know, crazy marketeer from day one or a project manager in this case. or a project manager in this case right yes 100 if you don't want him tell me huh? um i'll take him it's last and clear pivot yeah but i love that you mentioned this because at the same time and the whole reason we brought this up is creativity and fundraising now imagine scanning this barcode and finding a pitch deck or imagine um a few months back, I got an email from a company in San Francisco that had a link, a URL for a pitch that can go. When I opened the URL, so the company is a virtual, a virtual uh, a reality architecture and interior design app. It's an AI empowered VR tool for architects, interior designers, or whatever. How do you imagine he did a website? He did a whole pitch deck website. It wasn't a file. It was a pitch deck website. When you open it, you go into a virtual world. I mean, I swear to God, I wasn't even wearing 3D glasses, nothing. But I opened a link, I felt like I was taken from my office into a VR world. I opened, and this was a pitch deck. It was a URL, not for customers, for investors. I opened it up. I saw simulations everywhere, designs everywhere. And then the more I scrolled, the more interactive the screen was behind which which gave me an experience and again as as an entrepreneur wanting to raise funds the whole point is doing what this guy did leaving a fingerprint regardless of how, of how that looks like which a fingerprint does not have to be fancy yeah how much do you think had the can kind of it actually yeah it 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 could be even less it could be the way that i deliver my pitch deck one of the pitches that we saw and the pitch is actually in this room was in the beginning so Falak and uh, we have a program called Future Founders. It's where we uh, it's where we uh, support university students and fresh graduates to have a startup or a founder simulation to experience what a founder's life is. And we have three alumni in this room. We're Akbar al Bagin inshallah. But the fikra is one of the winners of the second cohort is here. Smahli. Okay. Can you can you talk to us of what you did in your pitch and what was your concept? <laughs> they hit their heads here maybe five times. This also left a fingerprint. But yeah, I hope you have insurance. Okay, alhamdulillah. <laughs> what did you do in your pitch? Was screaming. You were what? Screaming. You were screaming. Uh, that's an understatement. <laughs> yeah, the whole building was being kind of shaken. Eh? What did you give us as an experience? How were you creative in your pitch? Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. I, I'll tell you what I remember. Again, it was a final ceremony of future founders. We had a few judges here. Their idea was a logistics tech application. The idea was, yes, yeah. uh, was to support people that wanted to buy something overboard, يعني, uh, abroad, overboard. Shukran. Any, uh, to get any product internationally from anyone coming to Saudi. So I can go, I can contact Abdul Rahman, Alhin, he's in, in the US. I can tell him I want this product, bring it to my and I, I will pay you. So no no shipping company or anything. Lama, lama pitch, what did you do? Hey? 
دخلوا ما دخلوا هنا في نص هذا ومعاهم لاجج فيري سمبل يعني ام نوت تيلينج يعني بس فيري سمبل بس اكسبكتيشنز واز سمون ويل جو اون ستيج اند توك رياليتي واز ذير وير بروبس ذير وير ثينجز اسايد فروم توكينج ات ليفت سمثينج اند ذير ار لوت اوف اذر اكزامبلز از ويل بس الفكره من كل هذا يعني وي هاف انذر اكزامبل اوف و انذر الومناي ممبر معانا اوسو ان ذس روم فجاه قبل الفاينل سيرموني ادخل المكتب حقي اشوف ماي ماي وول ان ماي اوفيس فيها فيها بوسترز فيها صوتي وفيها وفيها صوره احد ثاني آه وكاننا سوبر هيروز واضوى فيرسز زياد تذكر؟ ام لايك وات دي اي دو وش هبلت؟ خفت طلع هي واز دوينج جوريلا ماركتينج ان كريتيف واي فور مي تو سكان ذا بار كود اند سي هيز بيتش ديك اللي كان حاططها ان ماي اوفيس اون ذا وول ذي واز ا بيبر برنتد فور فري بس اخذت انك من فلك اند هي بوت ات اون اور وول ذا هول بوينت فروم ذس از كريتيفيتي كان بي فيري سمبل اتس اباوت هاو يو ابروتش regular and now you're saying all devices. these creative ideas they don't need us <laughs> we're still here by the way <laughs> a lot of times creativity is about talking to people and talking to experts as well that have experience and one thing i just want to ask for the word it's okay this always happens we know that yeah you said it in the beginning you gave a disclaimer one thing i just want to mention is that creativity is like a muscle The more you the more you work out, how do you work out in creativity? You talk to people, you live experiences, you travel, you see the world, you see different cultures, you talk to different minds, different skills. This must have become bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is what creativity means. You touched on here, actually. We're going back to our points, Adrien. Um, but you touched on basically how to push forward innov- an innovative idea with a creative approach. One was the CV kind of thing. And kind of thing. yeah, That's whatever it. it was, yeah. And of course, the great gentleman here who, you know, started their pitches with creative and innovative ways. How do you take that experience? Or actually, I'm going to insert myself here. We can help where you say, okay, this is the experience I want to continue with my brand. This is where you know who you are, you know what you do, but what do you give me, right? Which takes us to the brand equity triangle or pyramid, which is this. Your brand identity is who you are. You know who you are, right? And whether you have a visual, a logo or not, it doesn't, it does matter from in my point of view, but perhaps as a founder, as a startup, you can't afford it in the beginning. As long as you know who you are, you can always build on that later, right? The stronger you know who you are, the stronger you build your brand, you can build your brand and the better you can build your brand later. When you you know who you are, and then what are you? Your brand meaning. Through this is your performance, your imagery. So what do I want people to see or understand and then what about you which is the feeling which is what you know these the gentlemen did when they came in and they did a performance for you right it's a feeling he made you curious okay is curious part of my brand do i want to keep curiosity as a main pillar or communication or tone of my brand great how do i do that how can i allow curiosity to resonate with my audience and through all of this then i build obviously my brand equity You know, my, for example, if we go back to Apple here, Apple's brand is built on being like, let's say, slick, you know, you need me. Minimalistic. Minimalistic, beautiful, clean, and we are better than everyone. So if, I don't know if any of you remember the old ads of Apple versus PC. When Apple and PC I'm were guys... Yeah. They did one. They did uh, another one last week. Do I catch up? My God, it was crazy. I'll send you a link. They did one with Samsung. No, sorry, other phones and iPhone, and there was a split screen. And then Jabin uh, Ahad got it like a screen. They were jumping into a screen, for example, and he was a thief. He was wearing all black, and then he didn't go into a second screen. So they wrote more security and privacy. Very smart. Yeah, it was very smart. But they always have this tactic. 
Apple's brand equity is what? Today, look, I wear an Apple watch. Do I need it? Not really. Does it do anything? Let's say the services of an Apple watch. Sorry, I know this is recorded. Please don't send this to Apple. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, please. I love your products. Uh, I wear an Apple watch. Why? Because it syncs with my phone. It syncs with my computer. It syncs with everything. It, it, it's Apple. Apple released a new iPhone. Oh, I want it. Do I need it? No, I don't need it. Doesn't matter. But they built their their brand is so strong and their their value is so strong that the moment they release anything, I want Apple. You know, and I'm sure there are people with Samsung who think the same or people with, for example, in other electronics or whether it's TVs or this is how you build your brand equity. Do you need to build it from day one? I would love to say yes, but in reality, it doesn't happen that way. You know, Apple failed twice, I think, before they actually built their first computer. Um, so building, building your brand from day one is important. Will it succeed from day one? Not necessarily. Will it change? 100%. But it's important for you to know who you are, where you want to go. And the moment you find that sweet spot of your product, where you innovate your idea. So I'm going to take all the words we use and say, where you innovate your creative idea and build your startup, build your product, build your company, build whatever it is, is the moment you begin to build your brand. And that's where you want to bring in the people who will help you build that brand. Can be an agency, can be a brand strategist, can be a you know advertising company, it can be guerrilla ad, it, whatever it is. But you need a creative approach. You need to stick in people's mind, and you need to build your brand. How and when? Obviously, we talked about the creative ways of funding. We talked about um, actually one question I have is when you do this, right? How? Actually, let's go back to brand equity. How does that kind of, or how does it actually affect your growth as a company? How does it numbers, numbers. add to your, not my game, numbers are not my game. I think there's a visual here, uh, but this is the perfect example of how it affects. I tell you to my three circles, the ones that you see here. Three circles are, the blue one is what your brand does best. Left one is what your customers want. Red one is what your competitors do best. Where you want to be, a lot of people, a lot of founders, when they start off, and to answer your question, they want to be somewhere between what your competitors do best and what your customers want, which is here, the losing zone. In reality, where you need to be is, don't even think of your competitors. Definitely do a competitive analysis, understand their point, their, uh, their strong points and weak points and so forth, but you need to be customer-centric. Because go, going back to your question, what will this translate to? Numbers. If I'm in the winning zone, you see the intersection in the folk, the one on top, between what your brand does best and what my customers want, numbers will be shown. Whether numbers is by user growth, it's by revenue, it's by supply growth, partnerships, regardless. Because Carla said something really important, which is creativity and your and your and your brand truly starts when you start adding value to customers. It doesn't nothing else matters. It could be enhanced, but the brand needs to enable customer value delivery and not the other way around. No brand, because they have a nice logo, will ever deliver more value to customers if the product or service was not up to standards. And this is the core point of what we wanted to mention here. I want to mention something on Apple. $3.3 trillion we checked today. It's, uh, and market cap of Apple is $3.36 trillion. And I thought, what do you think is the most expensive company in the world today? Oh, boy. And you all missed that. And you all the market closed with a new winner. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 Which is crazy. Pesos mind, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a Dow $3.4 trillion. And the Tehtam Atul is Microsoft. The point of this is that Ampen is a $3.3 trillion company. When we talk about 30% of their market cap, of their valuation, is brand, what does this mean? Taqriban $900 million. Purely the brand. This is what brand activity is. 
طيب وات از براند اكويتي وين وي توك اباوت يو مانت سمثينج امبورتنت امبل دوز ات دو اي نيد نو بس دو اي وانت ات يس يس سو وات دوز از ترانسليت انتو ديفرنت ثينجز بيلدينج ات ترانسليتس انتو سو ماني ديفرنت ثينجز سو ماني ديفرنت ستريمز يعني the story of a co- your story your brand story who you are apple builds on the story of the founder the story of how they started the story of how they failed right their brand the the their values your brand values are very important and their brand is built on these values and nothing done today from apple goes against these values you know so you, to get to this Obviously, you're going to need years of failure and trial and error. But to build that brand, you need you need a big team if it's going to be like Apple. Inshallah, a lot of the founders here reach this hopefully one day. However, I mean, brand tone, brand voice, it's not just your logo. It's how you communicate. It's if we go back to this, it's the resonance. your value your equity what you create is resonance what about you and me like i said do i need an iphone no but i want it why i don't know it makes me feel cool makes me feel safe makes me fit in whatever it is it resonates eventually your brand or your product your product and your brand need to resonate with your customer and that goes back to your uh little circle here which is the winning zone right which is what do i do best and what do my customers want what does apple do best it creates cutting edge products not driven customer driven and not necessarily cutting edge technology because others have a better technology and customers always want it no matter what right it's the experience and you, you recall when we mentioned the 10 types of innovation and then three components تحتها product experience and the brand or the engagement they innovate in the experience of the customer and you mentioned in my uh, my apple watch is linked to my iphone this is a power of integrations therefore it's a power of engagement they are engaging you more so purely both creative in the way that design is done as innovative in the way that they capture value but this takes us back to growth right you're going to create a product you know your customers want it you know that the market needs it you're in this winning zone right okay what do i do next how do i innovate in order for me to grow what do i create a new product that integrates with this product do i create a new experience with this service that i've given you know so there's different stages and i think because our title is investment and growth we have to touch on growth but how do i how do i take what i've started whether it's an mvp or a final product or you know uh, already a winning a winning idea where i already excuse my investor language i already have investors and i'm already out in the market how do i take that and build upon it so cuz correct me if i'm wrong at some point some companies reach a plateau right uh i i never think it's a one size fits all answer in every industry is, is different every company is different every circumstance is different and every market timing is different and i think this is where how many founders do we have in the room founders founders beautiful oh nice hello yes do you mind if we give this question to the founders oh we'll go ahead let's uh, open this up to the audience please uh, founders we would love your answer to a soul hada dakhir Whoever would like to start. I need to start. Okay, I need to start. Said, go ahead. Where in your growth, you build you build your startup, your company, your product, with your service, whatever it is. And in your growth, you come to a point where you realize you've hit a plateau. خلاص. Either your customers want it or don't want it, or you're unable to innovate. What was my question? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So how do I continue? How do I continue growing? What do you do when you're stuck, basically? Yeah. So generating other ideas that are not more that are not expensive to go and try. I ask this question only because a lot of, like I said, like we said in the beginning, the world of, you know, startups and investment and creative agencies. Perhaps here, people see them very different, but you're not. For example, in a creative agency, you reach a point, as he said, also in advertising or filmmaking, where 
you run out of ideas. How do we be creative in our approach? How do we be creative in our pricing? How do we grow by providing more to our client, right? And in the same, all startups are go through that. How you define a startup, perhaps is another talk that we can do, um, which is, is it startup in a creative world? Is it a tech startup? Is it a fintech startup? Is it a, whatever it is, right? Um, you you reach a point within your growth or your company where you need to be creative in your approach, right? Do you need a creative entity or strategist or innovation strategist? It's a, it's, it is a job, actually, innovation strategist. Do you need these people within your organization at some point? Yes. You know, when? I mean, every company has a different time frame. you know? Um, you could reach a point with a product, let's take Apple, they started with their Mac and then they went into, was it iPhone first? IPod. IPod, iPod. So iPod was the innovation from the Mac, right? So this is where you bring in a product specialists and innovation strategies is what can we do? Obviously this person was Steve Jobs, which was how much music can I put in my pocket, right? Um, Apple should give us shares from how much we mentioned them today. Um, <laughs> 3.3 uh, trillion dollars worth of shares would be great. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, we want to open up the floor for any questions. I know we went very far from our topic, but... Rax, if you go back to the papers that were done by Raneem, Allah Yes, Allah yes. uh, we will. We have touched upon everything, so yeah. we've done our homework. Yeah. And the idea, the idea here is strategies for startups, right? What are the strategies that you can work with? Like you said, there's not one size fits all. Um, when do you need a creative agency? I like to say from the beginning, is it necessary? Probably not. Do you need a creative mind? Yes, but you being an entrepreneur and starting a company means that you are creative, right? Do you need a strategist? Yes. Do you need a... Um, obviously, you need your whole structure from CFO to CFO, COO to CEO, all of that. But where do the ent the people that enter and push these minds come in? Come through different stages, depending on where you are. And building your brand, I think, from being an owner and founder and entrepreneur, and you know, a million ideas cross my mind every day. Building your brand from day one doesn't mean that you need to stick to it forever. Again, you need to be flexible. You need to understand that this brand is built for a specific need. Five years from now, this brand might need to change. So you need to be flexible enough within your brand, within your tone, within your service to be able to change without disrupting your customer. Or do I want to disrupt my customer? That's another question, right? Um, obviously, I can go on and on and on, by the way. Let me see. And I think one huge outcome from today is that uh, creativity as a practice, not just as a business, in fundraising, in growth, and agility in defining your needs from a creative lens, whether you're a startup or a scale. And the main part is, how can you create these long-term strategies? How do you merge a creative entity with a startup? Like you said, startups don't have money at a lot of the times, or they struggle for funding, or, or founders, what did you call it? Bootstrapping. Bootstrapping. Um, how do you create this long-term strategy? You create a partnership. You see what you need. How can we help each other? You know, what does this entity or agency or creative creative person offer? Do they know how to code? Do they know how to build an app? Do they know how to build it? Yeah, you need to be strategic in your choices and that creates those long-term relationships. Uh, being a sustainable company is built upon partnerships, 100%. I'd love to open it up for, for you guys. I think this is where I'd love to actually learn about you and what you do. Uh, well, again, we truly believe, you know, Fallak is all about an entrepreneurial ecosystem. So we want to keep it as spontaneous as possible, as conversational as possible. Uh, and Tayyib, I'm sure, with Tana, you've seen how we talk, for, you can know and know. Uh, I'm done talking. I, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's open the floor to you. I know Adwa can keep going forever. So please take the take the floor. Uh, founders, uh, I'd love to hear about your ideas. Um, and uh, I'd love to also have a quick round of introductions if possible. Whoever is not comfortable, completely fine. 
I'd also like to know who disagrees with what we said. If anyone disagrees with what we said or has another approach to it. That's a, a good debate question. I'll go back to I have a story again. I feel it's not really a brand that was a good one. I think that people became negative to feeling special. And the nation. In, interesting perspective. Uh, but how do you think this to happen? You know, they got addicted to feeling special. Uh, that's what you were saying, right? Yeah. They got addicted to feeling special or they made their clients feel special? Often, I think made the customer feel special. Because it makes you feel special. It's not really a feeling of interest, it's just like a feeling of sound. It makes you feel special to be telling you. But it's part of their brand, right? It's part of what they built for you to feel, to understand. Yeah, so every year we're always a new production. Mm-hmm. Always the same thing. But we always add the future. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not even one thing with the It's not a scientist. The fact that you can think of it because we have a translation situation, what's your two things? You are in the quality of the world. Uh, it's about being, well, yes, I think most of the where the brand credibility is so high. That whatever they do, hatta if it's a glass of water and they brand it apple, you're like, this water has bigger pH ratio, bigger sodium, bigger whatever that I don't even understand. Every water is the same. But yes, that that plays into their brand equity, right? It's recognizable, it's 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 high value, right? The fact that today, for example, I'll give you my nephews, for example. The first thing they'll ask me come September is. What's your iPhone? What number? You know, I'm 21. No, you're like, what? That's the first question teenagers ask today. Wow. What's your iPhone? What does it matter? No, it matters, of course. Am I, do I have an iPhone? In school, I'm sure a lot of people with, with kids or younger siblings here know how important it is. Oh, and ish al iPhone, hagik, ish al cover, ish al midri, ish. It all builds within the brand's. It, this adds to their equity. The fact that it's recognizable no matter where you put it plays on their value, right? And obviously, this is the goal of everyone. This can I ask a question? Of course. So, we always think of the brand as a brand. And we're not a brand. We always believe the brand we built has a value. How do we do it financially? So, if I say the value of my company is this, the brand values that so i've talked to so many people how do i take it not intentionally it's not a card it's not a, an asset but i actually put it in my financial statement as an asset i don't know i'm gonna give that to abba all right so fee three approaches towards calculating uh in brand equity the first approach is a cost-based Meaning, if throughout my five years I spent 1 million riyals in advertising, plus I spent 20,000 riyals in developing my logo, plus whatever, cost based, I put a markup on top. This is my brand after the value. Exactly. They can have cost plus this one. Second is a market based approach. A market based approach is healthily reliant on the market sentiment. I think I have, there were a few things over here. In market sentiment, meaning um, there is an investment tool, this map pitch book, it gives you valuations of companies, public companies, private companies, or whatever. Any investment firm has a membership fee. What was very interesting to me when I looked at a few companies in AC, one of the first pages I have is brand sentiment. What is that? It mentions of the company on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and if it's positive or negative. They should get to see for example, which they calculate in, in brand sentiments. Using AI, they look at Mohtawais, for example, how many customers are mentioning this company positively versus 
ان شاء الله يا رب ما في اني اني يعني نيجاتيف بس ات دوز ا كومباريزن اند ات دوز الماركت سنتيمنت ابروتش ذات بروفايدز يو وذ ا ماركت سنتيمنت اناليسيس لا لا ات جاست جيفز ا ريشيو الريشيو از زيرو اب انتل 1 ذا هاير يو ار ذا بيتر الفكره من الماركت بيس ابروتش از ذات يو دو ذس بيس اون ذا ماركت وات از ذا ماركت ويلنج تو بي فور ماي براند هاو دو يو جيت ذس برايس ويلنج تو بي So for in the case of Mohtawais, or let's take Apple as an example. If I am currently selling this bottle of water as Nova for 2 riyal, if it had the Apple logo, the market tells me how much can I sell it for? I can sell it for 10. Therefore, I have an 8x margin. This is a market-based approach. Another approach is the income-based approach. Next in Mithal that I just gave, but instead of having the markup in terms of revenue, I look at it in terms of profit. So if I'm selling a bottle of water for 10 reals, for example, my profit is 20%. So I take a 20% have the a 2 reals of profit and I multiply it by a 10x gross margin. If you come in all is not, not too complicated, but just to have a framework of looking at brand in a financial value, in a financial lens. The simplest approach with that in startups is a cost-based, simplest. For more mature companies, Market and income base, which is the scenario that Apple is based on, a 30% hagata. Market and income base are much more common. Then they have enough data to analyze the difference between pricing from a regular competitor and from this competitor in particular. Do you see startups putting this price market? And market with income? Yeah, do you see startups? Uh, I see scale-ups. For example, Foodex. Why is why is Foodex currently investing in M&A mergers and acquisitions? Because they know that whatever brand is out there in the food tech supply chain, if Foodex's logo is integrated, there is a bigger brand consumption. So they're looking at the market-based approach, which is very interesting. So like, an income-based approach is very similar, but again, I look at the profit margin. Same. But there's something going on about uh, in terms of the evaluation of sales. I think it's from the location of uh, out of the box, financial box, because the language of the accounting. So I know for the fact uh, when you want to like uh, recognize the tangible assets, you need to have uh, mergers and acquisitions. So when you look at the 10K of Apple, I think there is no value up to now for a good deal of Apple. Mojud. Yes. If you go to Yahoo Finance, Yahoo Finance. But it's out of the financial states. Uh, in the stock market, yes. And then you, the stock market is based on a market cap approach. But outside of the stock market, looking at the market cap approach, the breakdown of that market cap approach usually has either trademarks and IP or a good will zoom in from that. But I see your point. And from an accounting lens, you have an intangible or tangible. Looking at the intangible side is where you, I mean, uh, a creative side of accounting needs to come into play on how can I calculate a brand from an accounting lens, regardless of what this brand is doing. Well, it's 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 pretty complex and it's very subjective. I would say something and you would say something. That's why the simplest LA fee cost associated is the cost plus. Accounting tells me I paid one million on my brand. Therefore, this is my uh, brand equity. So, sorry, can be said. But so you believe building your brand equity comes in scale up, not in startup? I think it starts as a startup. It starts as a startup, and it's it's like a curve, right? It starts like it starts like this. It starts as a startup, and it scales as a, uh, a scale up. But with Alfudex in the film that I just gave, didn't start their brand equity when they became a scale up started when they were a startup, but it grew organically and of course paid when they expanded to Egypt. They, they opened a huge fundraise, 200 plus million, uh, no, sorry, 20 plus million dollars. And a large percentage on marketing. For this went over here. Shway, how well is it here? Yes. I want to see your opinion about this. 
I think حرجع لك الصندوق تمام. That is the perfect example of creativity in fundraising. شوف, let's take fundraising in a journey. I need outreach to find investors. I need to talk to investors. Then I need to send documents. Then I send documents and the creativity. Things have to be compliant. Things have to be legal. Things have to be. When I say legal, I mean kill harf mahsub. Don't be creative when you send documents. Be as and as of as much of an accountant as you can. We have a accountants. If I do okay. Uh, but for the journey steps in the creativity, you can go crazy. Uh, I send the documents, I, I sign. Bad my sign, uh, I update my cap table. What what happens after? I need to be creative in how I announce the fundraising. Do you get what I'm saying? Is that fundraising is a full journey. I can be creative in a few stages, but some stages absolutely not. So it's not a black or white scenario. It's uh, it's pretty much great. Yeah, uh, and you can see the amount of I'm not sure. But I'm going to take it here. 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 So, Kofi has a mistake of details. Sheikh uh, real estate. But in the home, give them a mistake. They will build the world. So, we're not going to do it. 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 But I think that. So, I'm not going to do it. 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 I'm not going to do اسمعوا <تصفيق> 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 Wow. Interesting. Yeah, but here they play on the we will prepare everything for you and make you feel important, right? The fact that you can't feel 10 or 20 people in the room means that they played on these investors or buyer's emotions saying, you are the most important people we want. Before we even launch, we want you in the room. This is guaranteed sales. It's a luxury. It's a luxury. It's making you feel important. Again, it's the it's the feeling. It's like Faisal said, it's making you feel like, you know, you're part of something. It's in the end, in the top of that pyramid that we had, it's the resonance, right? It's And it's a very creative way of getting funding, which is you are more important than everyone else. We want you in the room first. And this can be a creative way that startups can do as well. I mean, um, I was listening to a podcast recently and Elon Musk started the Tesla through a landing page. I don't know if it's Tesla or something else, but Elon Musk used the landing page for people to register for an idea that he had that he wanted to turn into a product. And he used this landing page for people to say, oh, we're going to launch this soon. Register your interest. Shaf, how many people actually registered? And if people actually like this product, he spent nothing on this landing page, but he got all the answers that he needs, which is, are people interested in this? Make fe- people feel like they're a part of what you do. It's part of your brand, right? And then again, the creative way of raising funding is putting people in the room before everyone else. I don't know if startups here have done that, but it's it's a nice. I mean, I know. I mean, I feel like if I if I was a mechanic, I would say I'm like, okay, where do I sign? I'm like, I mean, I love you. Hey, it's not that easy. Politically smart, mara. Yeah, just two hundred. Just just two hundred. 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 It's not. 
انترستنج لا علي اترد فيها من كل يوم سوري ان شاء الله بيوتيفل ما نبغى نطول عليكم بس اجين يعني اي ويلي ونت تو ميك شور وي هاف ا ريستيك كونفرسيشن سو اي ونت تو A final moment, yeah. If anyone has anything, any comments. None of the ladies spoke. لا حرام ويا. إلا الفيلم باول يعني ما. No للمرات الجاية لو لو نجيب لو نجيب أمثلة محلية بيكون بيكون أفضل وبيكون رابطنا معاها أفضل وأفضل. يعني أفضل من أن نتكلم عن شركة لها 70 90 100 سنة ما يعني ما حنقدر ناخذ الفوائد بالضبط بس لو تكلمنا مثلا عن سد أو ثمارة أو سلة أو فوقهم بيكون أوضح لنا الصورة وأقرب لل المرة الجاية اسمع شكلك ما تحب لا 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 المرة الجاية اسمع كان سبيك وذ اس ان شاء الله المرة الجاية سو جست تو جيف يو ان ايديا كمان اباوت ذيس بروجرام اوف كريتيف اكستشينج ما حيكون بس دائما انا واضوى نحكي وير جونا يو نو يو انفايت اندستري اكسبيرتس وي ويل اولسو هاف بانل ديسكشنز وي كان هاف ديفرنت بيبل Um, give separate talks. It's not just going to be us talking because يعني, خلاص, you're going to get bored of us. Um, no, the format. يعني, yeah. يعني, this is the first one, so I think it's open for the public. Uh, we are open to everyone and we do want the host competition. But there will be other activities where it's a round table and a very close discussion. And as I said in the very beginning, the point is results. We want partnerships to happen. We want people, founders to find creatives from the creative exchange. We want actual results and partnerships to happen. ف ستي تون ان شاء الله. واني ريكومنديشنز فور ذا سبيكرز از ويل، وي ديفنتلي ويلكم ذات. اف يو كان بي ذا سبيكرز از ويل، وي ديفنتلي ويلكم ذات. يعطيكم العافيه جميعا، سنش بليجر تو بي ويز يو وتانا. ثانك يو فور ذا اميزنج كونفرسيشن. ثانك يو. از اونلي. اولويز ا بليجر. شكرا ليكم. انتو ذاك ساوند. اوه القهوه لا تفوتكم. باسم يعطيك العافيه على القهوه الجميله. Uh, cacao bench. Tell me if that bench is not creative. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Thank you.